So Samsung just released their latest lineup of Galaxy S flagships. And if you haven't already seen my review of the S20 Plus, then I'll leave a link to that as a card up above and also as a link down in the description below. But with the S20 lineup now out and in the wild, we've reached a point in the year where, at least in terms of smartphone cameras, we've got basically the best that we're gonna get until the onslaught that is smartphone season later this year. Now, without question, when it comes to smartphone cameras, there are really only three that get touted as the best. The iPhone 11 Pro, the Google Pixel 4, and the Samsung Galaxy S20. And so for today's video, we're gonna compare what I would call the Mount Rushmore of smartphone cameras as we put these three flagships head to head. Now, I know the Huawei flagship devices are often sitting in the top three or four in terms of smartphone cameras as well, but let's be real, with the lack of Google Play services on those phones, most people probably shouldn't be picking them up. So with that in mind, we're gonna leave them out of today's comparison. I do also wanna shout out my very good friend, Alnado, who was kind enough to lend me his iPhone 11 Pro for this video. Thank you, brother. But with that said, let's hop over to the computer and compare these smartphone cameras. So I've loaded the photos and videos onto my computer. And as always, we're gonna run through a range of different scenarios to see which smartphone takes the best images and videos in differing conditions. So let's start with perhaps the most common thing that I personally use my phones to take images of, portrait photos of a person. So here's a fairly standard example of a portrait photo that you might take. We're in bright conditions and you can see that we've got the person framed in the center. There's a little bit of detail around the subject as well. And as you can see, each camera here is doing a fairly decent job of cutting out the subject. Now for this particular example, if I'm being nitpicky, which let's be honest, that's what we're doing here. The iPhone 11 Pro has surprisingly done the worst job at cutting me the subject out. If you take a look at the right side of my face, just underneath my ear, you can see a little bit of that tree in the background has not been blurred as it should be. Looking at the actual colors of the images, my least favorite is the iPhone 11 Pro, which looks fairly flat compared to the Pixel 4 XL and the Galaxy S20 Plus. They both have a little bit more punch to them, which I personally prefer. That said, I could do some editing on the iPhone 11 Pro image to make it match those two, but straight out of the box, I do prefer the images that are coming out of the Pixel 4 XL and the Galaxy S20 Plus. Okay, let's now take a look at a range of photos taken in good, bright conditions. And if we start with these first three, you can see that the Pixel 4 XL actually retains the most amount of detail in the darker areas of the image. Unlike last year's lineup of iPhones, Apple has actually listened to consumers and improved the image processing by adding back in some of that nice contrast that we like to see straight out of camera. That said, the trade-off is that we do lose some of that detail in the darker areas of the image. But if we take a look at how each phone handles exposure and color, you'll notice that the Pixel 4 XL has more pop in that tree. It's identifying the subject and making it really shine in the center there. The image from the Galaxy S20 Plus is definitely way more contrasty and saturated than the iPhone 11 Pro and Pixel 4 XL. You can tell that saturation there in the blues of the sky in particular. And whilst immediately looking at these three next to each other, you might think that the Galaxy S20 Plus's image is better because it looks more edited. There is very little room to play with this image in post. So picking a favorite out of these three is definitely gonna come down to personal preference, just like most of the photos throughout this camera comparison. But for me, I prefer the punchiness yet still detail retaining image that we see from the Pixel 4 XL. Now, if we punch in here to the telephoto lenses on each of these smartphones, you can see it becomes a slightly different story. First of all, it's a three times telephoto on the Galaxy S20 Plus compared to the two times telephotos on the iPhone 11 and Pixel 4. So that's the first difference to pick up on. But then without a doubt, the punchy, crispy, contrasty, saturated image from the Galaxy S20 Plus, that is definitely standing out here in this scenario. So that's definitely my favorite of the three, but keep in mind, it's also the furthest from what it actually looked like with my eyes. The image on the Galaxy S20 Plus makes it look like it is pretty much blue sky in the background, when in reality, the clouds were gray, as you can see on the iPhone 11 Pro and the Pixel 4 XL. So I'll take a couple of points off for being not as realistic, but you can see if we look at the darker areas in the image taken on the iPhone 11 Pro, we're starting to lose lots of detail there. Whereas on the Pixel 4 XL, there's lots of detail in those darker areas and it is a much more pleasing image to the eye. 
Now I'll show you some more examples as we go on of images taken from the telephoto lens and how that compares between the different smartphones. But for this particular example, my least favorite image is the iPhone 11 Pro. The Pixel 4 XL is next, although it is the most realistic or at least it retains that realism along with the iPhone 11 Pro while still having lots of detail in the darker areas of the image and still good punch as well. But for this particular example, my favorite image has been taken from the Galaxy S20 Plus. And then if we zoom right out and go to the wide angle lenses on the iPhone 11 Pro and the Galaxy S20 Plus, you can see some of the differences here. Now I've chosen to go back to showing you the image taken from the main lens on the Pixel 4 XL, just so you can appreciate how wide the lenses are on both the iPhone 11 Pro and Galaxy S20 Plus. But anyway, if we're comparing the wide angle images taken from the iPhone 11 Pro and Galaxy S20 Plus, you'll see a similar story as we saw with the other photos where the Galaxy S20 Plus's image is a lot more contrasty and saturated as you can see in the green of that grass there. I will say in this particular example, it does appear to be softer than the image taken from the iPhone 11 Pro. That can be a little bit deceiving though because they've over sharpened the image itself in the way that it's been processed. You could emulate that over sharpened look on the iPhone 11 Pro's image if you really wanted to. But again, without any editing, it still looks very pleasing to the eye. And I think out of the two wide angle lenses in this scenario, my pick goes to the iPhone 11 Pro. Okay, now before we go on any further, whilst it's all well and good to pixel peep and compare the image quality of these smartphone flagships, if you're serious about upping your ability as a photographer without having to spend thousands of dollars on expensive camera equipment, then I can highly recommend checking out a class on Skillshare that focuses on exactly that, taking pro photos with your smartphone. Now Skillshare is not only today's video sponsor, but it's also a platform that I just genuinely believe in. It has thousands of classes across a wide range of categories, including graphic design, video editing, and cinematography, just to name a few. And going back to that class by Dale McManus, it's a class that unpacks the theory of shot composition, as well as settings to change on your phone to maximize image quality, plus a heap more, all of which will really help to take your photography to that next level. Premium membership starts at less than $10 a month, but given they're sponsoring this video, Skillshare is offering the first 500 people who use my link down in the description, two months of Skillshare for free. So definitely make sure that you check it out using the first link down in the description below. Now moving to another set of images taken in daylight conditions. And you can see here, just like the previous example, the images taken from the Pixel 4 XL and Galaxy S20 Plus just have a lot more punch and clarity to them than what we're seeing with the image taken on the iPhone 11 Pro. And in fact, the image taken on the iPhone 11 Pro here is quite dull in comparison. And for me, it immediately becomes my least favorite out of the lot just because of how dull and flat it looks. My preference though for this particular example is the image taken on the Pixel 4 XL because I think it's just a little bit too over edited or at least it looks that way with the image taken on the Galaxy S20 Plus. We'll punch in again to the images taken from the telephoto lenses. And again, you can see the iPhone 11 Pro looks the worst of the lot, just like we saw with the previous example. Again, we have over sharpening and over saturation with the image taken on the Galaxy S20 Plus. But again, my favorite here is the Pixel 4 because we still have good clarity and detail, but it's not over saturated and over sharpened like the image taken on the Galaxy S20 Plus. Again, taking another look at the wide angle lens photos taken on the iPhone 11 Pro and Galaxy S20 Plus. And in this scenario, I much, much prefer the image taken on the Galaxy S20 Plus. And even though we know the image taken on the Galaxy S20 Plus has been over sharpened, if we take a look at that iPhone 11 Pro image, we'd have to do a lot of work to that to get it up to a point where I'd be happy to post that to social media because straight out of the gate, it doesn't look great. So here's another series of examples taken on the main sensors on each of these phones. And again, they just show off the way that each phone processes their images. So you can see very, very contrasty, way too contrasty in my opinion with the image taken on the Galaxy S20 Plus. It's a little bit more of a toss up here between the iPhone 11 Pro and the Pixel 4 XL. I would say that the image taken on the Pixel 4 XL has a slight purple hue to it in the darker areas of the image. And if you look in the details of the tree on the bottom left and bottom right of the image, it actually is a little bit noisy. So for that reason, my personal pick here is the image taken on the iPhone 11 Pro. Zooming in once again to the images taken from the telephoto lenses on each of these smartphones. And you can see, again, the image taken on the iPhone 11 Pro is very flat and dull, not a lot of life to it, which I don't like 
at all. So moving on to the Galaxy S20 Plus, still good clarity and good crispness here, but you can see there's some pink fringing happening to that white sticker that's wrapped around the pole in the lower third of the image. So without a doubt, my favorite of the three here is the image taken on the Pixel 4 XL. Lots of good clarity, good saturation, but still lots of detail. And if we zoom in here to a three times zoom taken on the Pixel 4 XL, which is done through software trickery, you can actually see that it looks better than the image taken on the Galaxy S20 Plus, which has a physical three times telephoto lens. All right, moving to a fairly tricky scenario for these cameras where we've got a subject in the middle, but in the background that is quite bright, and then a foreground surrounding that subject that is quite dark. And hopefully you can tell with the image taken on the Pixel 4 XL, those darker areas, particularly the tree and the fence are hued towards purple, which isn't great, but it's also quite noisy. Now this is a result of A, having poor noise reduction, but also B, trying to lift the shadows too high. And if you compare it to the image taken on the Galaxy S20 Plus, it's kind of just forgotten about the shadows and let them go. And they're just really dark, which is fine. At least we don't end up with that really grainy dark area of the image. But that makes the image taken on the iPhone 11 Pro all the more impressive because it has similar exposure levels to the Pixel 4 XL, but there's very little noise, in fact, pretty much no noise evident at all. So this results in an image where we have lots of detail in the darker areas of the image, but the brighter areas of the image still look good. Not as much punch as the Pixel 4 XL and Galaxy S20 Plus if you look particularly at the building, but still overall, it's a really impressive image and by far and away the best of the lot for this scenario. Bit of a different story when you zoom into the telephoto lenses. Again, my favorite is the Pixel 4 XL. It handles the darker areas better than it did with the main sensor, which is surprising. Not a lot of noise there, but still nice detail. The Galaxy S20 Plus, the foreground there is very dark and we're still seeing some of that fringing there, which you can particularly pick up on with the thin branches and twigs and whatnot. And then the iPhone 11 Pro doesn't look bad necessarily, but again, I just prefer the way that the image that's been taken on the Pixel 4 XL looks when we're comparing these three telephoto lenses. Bit more of a toss up when we're looking at the wide angle images taken on the iPhone 11 Pro and Galaxy S20 Plus. If you like that heavily edited look, then the Galaxy S20 Plus is for you. If you like a little bit more detail in your image, particularly in the darker areas of the image, then it's the iPhone 11 Pro. Okay, so we've just looked at a bunch of daylight scenarios. And as you can see, it is a lot tighter than previous years with each phone taking its turn at being my personal favorite. But a clear pattern does emerge in the way that each phone processes its images. And that is a big thing to keep in mind if you're comparing each of these smartphone cameras. And if you're looking to pick one up for its camera capabilities. But with that out of the way, let's now move into some low light comparisons. Now, last year, this segment was a blowout because the Pixel 3 XL was really the only phone that had any proper sort of night mode feature. And the other two phones just paled in comparison. There was no comparison, really. A lot has happened in a year. Both the iPhone and Galaxy lineup of phones now have their own night mode features. And so this race is a heck of a lot closer this year. You'll see in each of these scenarios that the processing of each smartphone is fairly similar to how they handle it in daylight conditions as well. We've got more contrast with the images taken in low light on the Galaxy S20 Plus and slightly less so with the iPhone 11 Pro and Pixel 4 XL. More often than not, the images taken using the night mode feature on the Galaxy S20 Plus still end up darker than what we see on the iPhone 11 Pro and Pixel 4 XL. But that said, the images taken using the Pixel 4 XL's night sight feature end up being a little grainier than what we see on the iPhone 11 Pro. Now, I wanted to also show you a best case scenario for each of these phones where let's say you've gone out to take images in low light with a tripod, or maybe you're leaning your phone up against something. Here is the before photo taken on the Galaxy S20 Plus. Not bad at all, enough light in the image. But when we switch night mode on for each of these phones with some form of tripod involved, then you can see the results that we get. So when each phone senses that it's locked off and on a tripod, they will enter into an extended shutter speed mode. For the iPhone 11 Pro and Galaxy S20 Plus, their images were taken over a period of 30 seconds. The Pixel 4 XL was taken over a period of about a minute and a half. And you can see that image looks very, very clean. But again, these images are phenomenal. Each phone can take really great photos in low light if you have some form of a tripod with you. But then the Pixel 4 XL has a trump card in its astrophotography mode. And this is again where it senses you're using a tripod, but this time you're shooting something that is not visible to the human eye, something like the night sky. And when it enters into astrophotography mode, you can get an image that looks like 
this. This image was taken in a park near my apartment, but if you go somewhere with minimal light pollution, you can end up with some crazy impressive results. So that's low light photos. And you can see it is so much closer this year than it was last year, thanks to each phone now having its own night mode functionality. And you can take some seriously impressive photos with each of these phones in low light conditions. I will say, I think my least favorite are the photos taken on the Galaxy S20 Plus. And I think the Pixel 4 XL just slightly takes the crown from the iPhone 11 Pro, thanks to the fact that you can manually turn on and off its night sight feature, and also thanks to its astrophotography mode. But with that out of the way, before we do some video comparisons, let's take a look at some selfie images taken on each of these smartphones. So you can see these are portrait selfie images because they give a good indication of the processing anyway. And you can see in this scenario, the Pixel 4 XL has really struggled with the edge detection with that plant and brick wall being behind my head. So it kind of loses this round. And I think for me, my favorite here is the iPhone 11 Pro. But then moving to a second lot of portrait selfies, and here my favorite immediately becomes the image taken on the Pixel 4 XL. When it gets its edge detection right, the selfies taken on any Pixel phone really, but particularly the Pixel 4 XL look phenomenal. Now I will say it didn't quite get the edge detection down beneath my torso and my right arm looking from this perspective. So that is a little bit of a shame, but just looking at the face, which is where our eye is drawn to, this is my favorite image of the lot. So let's now take a look at some video comparisons and we'll start with a front facing camera vlog style recording. Okay, so this is a video test with the selfie camera on the iPhone 11 Pro. Things to look out for here are stabilization, audio quality uh, and general image quality as well. And then we'll jump over to the next cameras and we'll see how they compare as well. Now we're over to the front facing camera on the Pixel 4 XL. There should be a slight noticeable drop in at least resolution because the front facing camera on the 4 XL only allows you to record at 1080p at least at this point in time. So keep that in mind. Uh, but just generally speaking, how does the audio sound? That's something that Pixel phones have struggled with in the past. So listen out for that. And then stabilization. Does this work with me just walking and holding the phone with my hand? Okay, now we're recording with the front facing camera on the Galaxy S20 Plus. Like the iPhone 11 Pro, we do have the option to shoot in 4K at up to 60 frames a second, even on the front facing camera, which I am not actually at 60 frames a second at the moment because this video is published in 24 frames a second. So there's no point in doing that. Uh, but we do have that extra capability there, which is a nice option. But again, just holding the camera with my hand, walking along, how does the stabilization look? How does the audio sound? And also, of course, how does the general image quality look as well? Now, surprisingly, my favorite of the lot here is what we saw out of the Galaxy S20 Plus, and it is so impressive that this is the quality that we're getting out of the front facing camera. Image quality was just about on par with the iPhone 11 Pro, although slightly better in my opinion, and audio quality was the cleanest of the lot. That's not to say the audio from the Pixel 4 XL or the iPhone 11 Pro were bad by any means, they weren't, but I think overall the image quality and the audio quality from the Galaxy S20 Plus was the most impressive in my opinion. Let's now take a look at a similar test, but this time from the rear cameras. Okay, now we're shooting a vlog style test again, but this time with the rear camera on the iPhone 11 Pro. I am currently backlit by the sun, so this should be a fairly interesting scenario to see what the image quality looks like. Is it any better than the front facing camera from the earlier test? And also how does the stabilization look? How does the audio sound? All those things to keep in mind when it comes to comparing these three cameras. Okay, so same footpath, same test. We're on the rear facing camera though, this time on the Pixel 4 XL. I'm still backlit by the sun, although it might be dipping behind some clouds. So keep that in mind. But again, does this seem any better or much worse than the other two phones that you're about to see or that you have seen? Keep in mind that uh, this is now in 4K, which is matching the other phones. So we should see a nice resolution bump. But again, only up to 30 frames a second on the Pixel 4 XL. Rumor has it, we might see an update in the future that allows us to go to 4K 60. But at this point in time, that is not out. So you're just gonna have to deal with 30 frames a second on the Pixel 4 XL. Right now, switching over to the rear camera on the Galaxy S20 Plus. Same scenario, a vlog style situation. I don't really see many people using their smartphones for this exact purpose but again it's helpful to see the image quality and the audio quality as well which is something i've noticed when you switch to using the rear camera on samsung galaxy phones in the past at least the audio quality has taken a dip so listen out for that does that sound worse than the front facing camera test from earlier on 
This one feels like the hardest to pick a winner from because they all have their pros and cons. The sharpest image seems to have come from the Pixel 4 XL, which is surprisingly impressive. Audio quality was pretty equal across the board, so hard to pick a winner based on audio quality alone. Keep in mind the Pixel 4 XL does lean towards cooler color temperatures and the iPhone 11 Pro and Galaxy S20 Plus lean towards warmer color temperatures. So that's something to keep in mind. It's pretty subtle, but again, important to know. I will say though that the Galaxy S20 Plus seemed to lose focus a heck of a lot more throughout the video compared to the other two phones. So that kind of rules it out of contention for winning this category. So it's a toss up between the iPhone 11 Pro and the Pixel 4 XL. I think for this test, the Pixel 4 XL is gonna slightly take the cake because I wanna be controversial. But then let's take a look at the next comparison, which kind of rules out the Pixel 4 XL as well. Okay, now a quick comparison between the wide angle lens on the iPhone 11 Pro and then on the Galaxy S20 Plus, because this is a scenario I can actually see people potentially utilizing a little bit more than the previous rear video camera vlog style test, because in this scenario, you're actually much more likely to get what you want in the frame. Whereas in the previous test, it's hard to really tell what is actually in the frame and what you're cutting off. The other thing to keep in mind though, when you're using the wide angle lens is that my hand may or may not be slightly in the side of the frame at the moment. So that is something that you have to maneuver around. You have to tweak the position of your hand to make sure that it's not in the shot. But the other thing to think about is when you switch over to using the wide angle lens, does the audio quality take a dip? Does the image quality take a dip? Things to keep in mind. Okay, we're switching straight to the Galaxy S20 Plus, the wide angle lens on the rear of the phone, another vlog style test, comparing it to the iPhone 11 Pro, skipping out on the Pixel 4 XL because it sadly does not have a wide angle lens on the back of the phone, which is such a shame. I'd love to see what Google could do with the wide angle lens. But anyway, moving on to the Galaxy S20 Plus, what does the image quality look like? How's the audio sound? How does it compare to the wide angle lens on the iPhone 11 Pro? So because the iPhone 11 Pro and the Galaxy S20 Plus have wide angle lenses on the rear, that allows them to get a few more brownie points compared to the Pixel 4 XL. So it's nice to have that versatility on both of those phones. That said, in terms of image and audio quality, the winner here is clearly the iPhone 11 Pro. It's nice to have the wide angle lens on the Galaxy S20 Plus, but the audio and image quality is subpar compared to what we're seeing from the iPhone 11 Pro. Okay, now let's do a general video test using some landscape style shots. Now for this landscape style video camera test, it's really gonna come down to personal preference. But if you were forcing me to pick a favorite, I'd probably say that the iPhone 11 Pro is more reliable. And that's largely thanks to the fact that the Galaxy S20 Plus and Pixel 4 XL sometimes fight against themselves because of their image processing. And that sometimes results in over sharpened or noisy videos. Not to say they're bad by any means, but again, I just think the videos from the iPhone 11 Pro are more reliable. As well as that, the iPhone 11 Pro and Galaxy S20 Plus also have those wide angle lenses and they have higher frame rate recordings, which means the Pixel 4 XL sits firmly at the bottom in terms of video. Not to say it's a bad video camera, it's not, it's pretty good. But the Galaxy S20 Plus is second and the iPhone 11 Pro is at the top. And those two sit at the top thanks to their versatility. Now that's not necessarily the same story when we put these video cameras to the test in low light scenarios. Now you'll see with the iPhone 11 Pro, it looks pretty clean. There's still a fair bit of mushiness happening because of the low light scenario. But you'll also notice that the sky and all those parts over to the left of the image are really dark, meaning that we don't have as much noise, but there's not as much detail in the image. Now, when we compare that to the video taken from the Pixel 4 XL, you can see that it is a lot brighter and there's a lot more detail in the darker areas of the image. As a result though, we seem to have a lot of artifacting that's flickering on and off throughout the image. So the quality isn't great in that respect, but it certainly is a lot brighter than what we saw with the iPhone 11 Pro. And then if we switch to the Galaxy S20 Plus, you can see it still attempts to correctly expose the image like the Pixel 4 XL. It's not too dark like what we saw with the iPhone 11 Pro, but it doesn't have as many artifacts as what we saw on the Pixel 4 XL's test. And I actually think it's a slightly cleaner image than the iPhone 11 Pro's video as well. So this category has a clear winner in the Galaxy S20 Plus. Okay, so that is the full comparison done. And as you can see, there is no real clear winner 
across the board. As I mentioned earlier, each phone had their moments throughout this comparison where I felt like they were my personal favorites. All three phones had their moments in the daylight scenarios. The Pixel 4 XL took consistently the best images from the telephoto lens, but the iPhone 11 Pro and Galaxy S20 Plus traded bars in regards to video and wide angle lens images. The Pixel 4 XL just took the crown in low light comparisons. And so on the surface, it appears as though we have no real clear winner. That said, as I've discussed throughout the video, the versatility of both the iPhone 11 Pro and the Galaxy S20 Plus make them potentially more appealing options for most people. And I say most people because I still personally prefer the images that come out of the Pixel 4 XL more often than I do the ones that come out of the iPhone 11 and Galaxy S20. And I don't take lots and lots of videos on my Pixel 4 XL, so that's not as important to me. But as always, those are just my thoughts. I'm super interested to hear your opinions down in the comments below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Definitely let me know. Now, before I close off the video, in case you haven't already seen it, I'm currently holding a Pixel 4 giveaway here on the channel. So if you wanna enter, then I'll leave a link to the submission video as a card above and as a link down in the description below. But that's it. Thank you all very much for watching. Thank you Skillshare for the support and I will catch you later.